Welcome back. You're still watching the daily debate. As I mentioned, that we have a number of top stories that we will be shedding more light on straight away during the course of the episode. And we will be starting with the activities of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, who said that the Tushka area is witnessing large agricultural achievements that were possible with the effort of the Egyptian workers in the mega national project. The president's remarks were made in a phone conversation with the delegation of the media men during the visit to the southern area that was organized by the Armed Forces Morale Affairs Department. The president said that it is targeted that the agricultural lands will be extended to 4 million fedans in no more than one year. President Assisi described the media tour as a day in the love of Egypt, calling for similar tours in other agricultural projects across the country, notably the Egypt Future Project. In another effort, uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi held a meeting on Sunday with the Prime Minister Mustafa Madhuli and the Minister of Trade and Industry, Ahmed Samir. Presidential spokesman said that the meeting followed up on the national strategy for the industry development and the future vision to increase the growth rates of the industrial sector, raise its share in the gross domestic product, and to enhance the industrial exports in quality and quantity. The meeting reviewed the updates on the efforts to establish the integrated industrial complexes and the zones and to support the manufacturing industries, especially in the priority fields. President Assisi said that the efforts to advance the Egyptian industry should be enhanced, describing it as the main driver for the comprehensive economic progress and the leader of the development across all sectors. The president also added that the industrial private sector should be enabled through removing obstacles that hinder its activity and creating suitable environment for its progress and providing incentives to the industrial investments. And from uh, industry to tourism, as uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi directed that the extensive efforts to encourage the tourism sector should be continued in order to invest in the Egyptian unique tourism potentials and its ancient historical assets. The President urged accelerated work to finalize the touristic projects, draw in more local and foreign private investments in tourism, and to integrate the tourism sector in ongoing overall development processes. These directives were made at a meeting at the President held with Prime Minister Mustafa Madhuli and the Minister of Tourism and Antiquities Ahmed Aisa. Presidential spokesman Councillor Ahmed Fahmi said the meeting tackled the future strategies for the tourism sector, including plans to increase the hotel rooms and provide new backing to the touristic investment. The meeting noted that the tourism sector achieved the positive growth in the first half of the fiscal year, which will contribute to achieving the target of hosting 30 million tourists annually by 2028. And uh, finally, the last uh, piece of uh, top stories for today. Two more parties announced on Sunday support for the nomination of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi for a fresh term in the upcoming presidential election. Both the Masr October Party and the Egyptian National Movement Party issued statements expressing support for President Hassisi following similar announcements from two other parties. In the statement, the Masr October party headed by Dr. Jihan Madih said that it supports President Assisi to continue with the path that he started 10 years ago. It said the achievements during the past decade urge backing Assisi in the election. On Saturday, both the Congress party and the Free Egyptians party announced President Abdel Fattah Assisi as their candidate. 
head of the Free Egyptians Party, Dr. Arsam Khalil, directed to give priority of intensifying courses for preparing and equipping the youth, who launched the electoral campaign to establish a central operations room. The head of the Free Egyptians Party also assigned the research unit and the study center to work on following up and refuting the allegations made by the potential candidates or the motivated parties with the aim of casting doubt on the party's presidential candidate or attempting to break the unity of the Egyptian people. Up next, we will be focusing on the main topic of the daily debate for tonight, which is Egypt is appreciating the invitation to be joining the BRICS economic bloc starting from next year. The details are in the upcoming report, so stay tuned. President Fattah Sisi expressed appreciation for the BRICS announcement of extending an invitation to Egypt to join the bloc along with five other nations starting January 2024. President Sisi said in a statement that Egypt values the trust bestowed upon it by all member states of the BRICS bloc, with whom Egypt share robust ties and look forward to fruitful collaboration with them in the coming period as well as with the invited countries. The bloc's objectives of enhancing economic cooperation among member states. The president added that the bloc is meant to uphold voices of southern nations in addressing diverse developmental issues in a way that supports rights and interests of developing countries. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa announced that the BRICS Club of Emerging Nations would welcome six new members, including Egypt, Argentina, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. The membership will take effect starting 1st of January, Ramaphosa told BRICS summit held in Johannesburg, which saw the attendance of Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli on behalf of President Sisi. The expansion is the first such move by the bloc, which includes Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa since 2010. Initially formed with four nations in 2009, the bloc extended its membership the following year by including South Africa. Given the mounting interest from multiple nations to become part of BRICS, the organization is now contemplating a broader expansion strategy. China on Tuesday threw its weight behind plans to expand the club of large emerging economies. The expansion is also a new starting point for BRICS cooperation. It will bring new vigor to the BRICS cooperation mechanism and further strengthen the force for world peace and development. In June 2023, Egypt officially submitted its application to join the BRICS group. The bloc's aspiration to create an alternative currency for global trade potentially backed by gold and to lessen reliance on the US dollar is believed by experts to benefit Egypt, which has faced a critical shortage of US dollars for about a year and a half. The upcoming membership in the BRICS could also open doors to substantial investments in the Egyptian economy. Preceding the submission of its application to the group, President Sisi ratified Egypt's membership in the BRICS New Development Bank in March. The bank agreed to Egypt's commitment of contributing $1.196 billion with an initial payment of 20%. Notably, Egypt current allotment is the highest allowable for an unfounding member accounting for 2.1% of the voting power. With this inclusion, Egypt became the fourth new entrant in the bank's inaugural expansion marking, a significant step in extending the global presence of the NDP. Welcome back. You're still watching the Daily Debate and I am honored to be having with me over the program for tonight uh, Dr. Alia Mustafa, the sustainable development expert. Uh, Dr. Alia, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you so much for having me today. Anytime. Uh, first of all, we will be, uh, of course, focusing on the BRICS and Egypt joining the BRICS or accepting the invitation to be joining the BRICS for the upcoming year. Uh, for the people 
watching us. Yeah. They don't know really about the BRICS. What is the importance of joining uh, such a bloc? What does it comprise? What are the benefits for Egypt to be joining the bloc? Exactly. So uh, let's uh, start uh, first or the very beginning by talking about BRICS entity yes. itself. Uh, we have to know that uh, uh, BRICS is a very, very strong economical and uh, industrial uh, uh, company, uh, or, sorry, organization yes. uh, and entity as well. Uh, it started in uh, 2001 as a BRIC, not BRICS, mm. uh, by having five main countries, which are uh, Brazil, Russia, India and China. Mm -hmm. Later on, it was be joined by South Africa, and yes. it's uh, called BRICS. Mm -hmm. We have to know that um, the main goal of BRICS is to enhance and encourage all the upcoming uh, countries which have a great rule and a great step in the uh, uh, global economical uh, uh, phase and uh, so on. Uh, also, we have to know that uh, this entity uh, have a, a very big deal of importance in the global markets, yes. uh, uh, economically, uh, especially economically. Uh, we have to know uh, its power. The power of that, uh, we have to know that it has um, or um, uh, mostly 41% of the land of the uh, whole world yes. also it uh, it has more than 25 percent of the population of the whole world and it, it has a very very great power in the uh, world's markets as well economically mm. uh, it's not only economically you have to know it has a very big uh, political power yes. we have to uh, know that the countries like uh, big countries and austerity countries like China and like Russia uh, and India as well have a very uh, big uh, um, uh, we have to if we can say a, a very big uh, leap in the uh, global uh, economy in the whole world and uh, for Egypt to joining such uh, an organization it's yes. a very very big uh, leap in our economy and later on we're going to talk about the benefits of that mm -hmm. as well yes you mentioned that uh, it could be benefiting Egypt uh, politically and economically as well uh, speaking of uh, the economic aspect for Egypt how do you think this membership uh, for Egypt in uh, the BRICS could be uh, having positive impacts for Egypt economically Yes, uh, by talking about uh, the benefits, but before talking about the benefits, I want to talk about uh, why Egypt. So why did they choose Egypt to join them? We have to mention something is uh, really, really important, and the people has to know yes. that uh, Egypt has been offered several times to join uh, such an organization. And later on, Egypt has taught the decision to accept this invitation uh, this year. Mm -hmm. uh, why Egypt? So we have to know that, uh, as we have mentioned before, uh, this organization seeks uh, the, the countries which has uh, um, a very big step and a stable uh, mm. step in the economical uh, power of the world. Yes. So Egypt has this. Uh, uh, Egypt has a very logistic access, like uh, we have the Suez Canal, mm. uh, which is uh, very, very important for these countries, yes. for uh, trade and so on, and industry. Uh, like uh, China and Russia, uh, for example. Uh, also, uh, Egypt has um, uh, uh, launched uh, several uh, infrastructure uh, projects, very big projects in, in Egypt. Also, uh, Egypt has uh, made several projects in the ports um, reusing uh, the ports and restructure and manufacture the ports that we already have uh, on the uh, the coast and the borders of Egypt, was, mm -hmm. uh, which is very very important. Yes. Egypt, despite all this, uh, the problems and the challenges that we are uh, have been facing in the past uh, few years, Egypt has been and stable uh, uh, economically, and we were uh, at the top of the list of the uh, top countries in the European uh, of the Arabic area and uh, region as well to be the top economical uh, uh, in the sector of investments mm -hmm. uh, despite we're having se several competitors like yes. uh, Saudi Arabia like uh, Emirates and so on mm -hmm. um, by talking about the infrastructure uh, this organization 
meant uh, for, um, mainly to support the projects which focus on the infrastructure and the countries, yes. um, and the development countries and the uh, economical issues. Uh, Egypt has some economical issues, as we know, and we have been suffering from the inflation recently. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, uh, Egypt is going to benefit a lot from this uh, joining this organization, uh, and the later we are going to uh, talk specifically about the benefits of that. Mm -hmm. uh, by talking about the infrastructure, yes. we are going to support uh, two kinds of infrastructure the uh, digital infrastructure which i um, i see it's really really important and also the uh, social infrastructure mm -hmm. also it supports all the projects that is supporting the uh, sustainable development yes. and which is achieving all the sdgs as well mm -hmm. yes, yes. Uh, you've mentioned uh, doctor that we have economic stability and we have political stability uh, over the past maybe nine years ever since the election of his excellency president abdel fattah hassisi so uh, how do you see the importance of implementing the economic reform program in Egypt as we have seen over the past few years to be leading Egypt into joining the BRICS. Okay, so uh, by talking about the benefits uh, uh, of Egypt to have or to join such an, uh, a big uh, entity, uh, number one uh, or the fifth thing that we have to mention is the investments yes uh, we will and uh, that or this will enhance uh, a very big in investments mm -hmm. into the global markets or from the global markets to the local market and yes. egypt uh, as well as we know that the the global economy uh, the brex has or owns over 30 percent of the global market uh, in the whole world which is a very uh, big percentage and this percentage is increasing by the time also we have to mention that uh, uh, this will release the pressure of the dollar uh, the secrecy of the dollar that uh, the dominating uh, the currency as we have to know in yes. Egypt we have a problem mm. uh, the lack of uh, foreign currencies mm. and how can this affect the Egyptian economy because you mentioned that we have a problem in terms of relying solely on uh, the dollar yes for trade exchange at least yes exactly mm. uh, by talking about trade and uh, in the manufacture uh, sector is, uh, itself uh, we will mention China China as or um, being one of the members of BRICS uh, and we all know that China is the source or the big source of the raw material in the whole world yes. and Egypt has been uh, uh, importing uh, raw materials uh, several uh, years uh, ago and uh, being for Egypt as a member or being a member in this will uh, give us a very big benefit of uh, importing these raw materials and this will affect also on the local uh, industries like uh, the local goods and also the uh, strategic goods and uh, some of the uh, of the goods in Egypt as well and this will make uh, a balance in the uh, lack of the currencies that we uh, have mentioned as well yes yes doctor you mentioned the investments the possible um outside investments the foreign direct investments coming from outside of egypt into the country in different fields and more specifically into infrastructure for example because in terms of the BRICS, it includes china as well and we have uh, this initiative which is the silk road or the belt uh, and uh, road uh, between egypt and china how do you think the infrastructure projects that were implemented by president assisi over the past nine years will be um, enhancing such an idea to be cooperating with the members of the BRICS within ourselves and with the other countries as well. Yes, uh, by talking about th this, we have to know that this is one of the biggest reasons why they uh, uh, asked Egypt specifically to join BRICS. Uh, Egypt, as we said, it's a very logistic area for them. Yes. And we are uh, also having a very logistic uh, 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 passage which is the Suez Canal and this is well enhanced for them and giving them a very got, uh, uh, 
a profit, if we can say, yes. uh, and a privilege for them to uh, for the goods and for the trade, for industry as well. Uh, we have to mention uh, something which, as uh, I see, it's a very, very big benefit for Egypt to have, mm. which is the transformation of technology. Yes. So, uh, which I see, in my opinion, is one of the most important uh, um, benefits or privileges that we are going to have uh, uh, by joining BRICS. Uh, in the past few years, we were suffering from uh, the lack of technology and the, the manufacture I mean the manufacturing of technology itself yes yes and uh, that will uh, help us a lot to um, for Egypt itself to manufacture the technology to create the technology will have a big generation which creates the technology to the whole world we're not just receiving we are creating mm. Yes. Uh, yesterday, for example, we celebrated uh, the Egyptian bilateral uh, relations with uh, Russia over the past 80 years, historical uh, relations. So this means that we have already good relations between Egypt and every member of uh, the BRICS, Brazil, uh, China, India, uh, South Africa. So how do you think joining the BRICS would be elevating the bilateral ties between Egypt and every other member of the BRICS for the future? Okay, we have to know that uh, already Egypt has a very big ties and very big uh, and strong relations with all the members of BRICS. Uh, we know that uh, South Africa, we uh, have a very big ties with South Africa yes. several years ago, with Russia as well, with uh, China and with all these countries. This would help us uh, in uh, the infrastructure projects, in our infrastructure project and also in the, in the army. Uh, as well, we have India, we have Russia, very strong uh, uh, manufacturing for the army, for the weapons and so mm. on. It will help us a lot in several sectors. Yes, yes uh, doctor, we will be joined over the phone with uh, engineer Hassan Chaban, the development expert and the former vice uh, chairman of uh, the agricultural uh, syndicate. Uh, engineer Hassan Chaban, thank you very much for joining us and thank you for your time, first of all. Uh, I can't really hear you. Would you please raise your voice? Yes, Engineer Hassan Shaban, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? No, you still a little bit far. But I, can, I can barely hear you. I, I, will tr I will try to raise my voice even further. Can you hear me now, Engineer Hassan Shaban? Yes. yes. Uh, first of all, how do you see the importance of uh, Egypt joining the BRICS over the past week? Uh, well, I have a point of view in this regard, actually. Yes. It is, Egypt was not important to the BRICS, and BRICS is not really uh, waiting on Egypt to join. Yes. Uh, uh, joining the BRICS will put a lot of pressure over Egypt, because we're going to have to develop and really make very harsh programs to cope with the rest of the members of the BRICS, actually. Yes. This is an invitation to succeed. Uh, we have a lot of investments in, in infrastructure. We need phase two to put life and spirit in, in our infrastructure and have an economical return for what we've invested in the last 10 years and maybe before that. We keep on saying that uh, we have an important uh, element uh, to our economy, which is the Suez Canal. In my opinion, joining the BRICS will have two advantages to Egypt. First, you're joining a, a, an organization where you have Ethiopia with you. And it doesn't make sense that we still uh, uh, go on with the, a little bit, uh, with, with the dispute that we have with Ethiopia over the Nile water. And I think being in the same organization, I think the other members of the organization will help to uh, resolve the dispute that we have with Ethiopia, and all of us will move toward uh, the development of uh, the uh, Nile, uh, River Nile Basin. This is number one. Yes. So we have a very good chance to resolve this problem and remove the pressure that we have over Egypt on this regard. Number two, 
uh, looking and considering the political situation worldwide, you will see that Russia, China, uh, are, are very active right now in Africa. And uh, I think uh, instead of concentrating on the uh, Alexandria Cape Town uh, highway that connects north to uh, south, I think if we develop a road, a highway that, con that connects Safaga or, uh, uh, or Barnes or wh whatever on the Red Sea all the way to Dakar, literally uh, uh, along the uh, equator, uh, this will be the BRICS road to the heart of Africa. You will go through Chad, Niger, Dahomey, Burkina Faso, uh, uh, Central Africa. All of these countries require uh, really uh, development. And once uh, uh, the, the BRICS countries, uh, uh, you know, construct this road, this will turn really Egypt to a logistic location to the heart of Africa. All of our goods that we manufacture in Egypt uh, will actually be uh, 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 exported to uh, the heart of Africa, as well as turning Awainat and Tushka to an industrial zone that actually provides these country with their uh, uh, agro needs. Yes, uh, Engineer Hassan Shaban, you've mentioned that uh, Egypt has an invitation to succeed now, as you mentioned uh, during your answer for the first question. But on the other hand, how do you see the benefits that could be coming out from Egypt to the other members of the BRICS? Well, uh, cooperating with countries like China or India, we could actually uh, develop our industry uh, and produce ag agro equipment in our in, the, uh, in our military uh, factories. Qadr uh, uh, factory, we could actually start uh, producing our tractors and uh, lawn mowers and uh, you know whatever we need in the uh, agricultural uh, sector. Because till today we do not produce our agricultural equipment and it's about time that we cooperate with a country like China uh, because we import a lot of equipment from China in this uh, uh, field and I think uh, a, a city like Mahalla uh, where they have really some good uh, maybe a little bit primitive equipment being produced over there but again we could again uh, built on this. We, uh, I think in the coming era, we will have to encourage the private sector. Uh, uh, the, the, the competition between the, the government or the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the government and the private sector will have to stop and we're going to have to cooperate. Uh, uh, private sector and the government, hand in hand, uh, we have to work together to develop and be able to cope with the rest of the members of the, uh, of the uh, BRICS. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the BRICS countries are, are really in the uh, phase of development right now. Uh, what we uh, uh, have to know that Ethiopia is moving very fast and they have a very high rate of growth. Uh, you know, we, we don't have to cope with that. We're going to have to get closer to our brothers in Saudi and invite them to invest in Egypt. Maybe we go to Africa and uh, invest in Africa and grow some of our crops, strategic crops in Africa. Uh, there is a new bowl game uh, uh, on the arena right now. Unless we manage to read uh, what's happening, because we're going to have to stop thinking in the traditional way, red tape should be completely wiped out. And I think uh, 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 the task is phase two of CC program that he started 10 years ago. 
So that we are looking for phase two, where to put spirit in everything. All the infrastructure should work very hard, and uh, we're going to have to have an economic and an economic return for this. Yes, uh, Engineer Hassan Shaban, I know you're short on time, so my final question, because uh, today we have a main top story for President Abdel Fattah Hassisi giving us statements uh, regarding uh, Tushka, for example, and as you are uh, the former vice uh, chairman of uh, the Farmer Syndicate, how do you see the importance of a project like uh, the future of Egypt or uh, Mustaqbal Misri for the agricultural projects, because you mentioned that. Uh, uh, let me let me put it this way. Uh, 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 definitely, a project like Tushka is very important. Yes. The the location is very important. But it is if I turn Tushka and the Wainat not only uh, to an agricultural area, but as well an industrial area, and uh, whatever I produce in Tushka and the Wainat. I use it as a raw material for industry and export it to the closed countries in Africa that do not have shores on seas, not, neither the Mediterranean nor the Red Sea, like Chad, Dahomey, Niger, all of these countries do not have uh, shores actually. And our uh, 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 ports on the Red Sea could actually be a logistic port to all these countries, if we connect them with a the highway and call it the BRICS highway and convince our partners in BRICS to contribute to this highway because this is really the gate to the heart of Africa. Yes, uh, Engineer Hassan Shaban, the former vice chairman of the Farmer Syndicate, as well as being the economic and the political analyst. Thank you very much for being with us tonight over the phone on the Daily Debate. We will be heading to the other report of the Daily Debate for tonight regarding Egypt joining the BRICS with a positive prospect for both sides in the upcoming report, so stay tuned. The Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics CAPMAS has announced that trade exchange between Egypt and the BRICS countries increased to 31.2% billion dollars in 2022 compared to 28.3 billion dollars in 2021, a growth of 10.5 percent. The BRICS countries are Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The value of Egyptian exports to BRICS countries increased to 4.9 billion dollars in 2022 compared to 4.6 billion dollars in 2021 an increase of 5.3%, while the value of Egyptian imports from BRICS countries amounted to $26.4 billion compared to $23.6 billion, an increase of 11.5%. India came at the top of the list of the highest BRICS countries importing from Egypt during the year 2022. The value of Egypt's exports amounted to $1.9 billion, while China came second with $1.8 billion dollars, then Russia with $595.1 million, then Brazil with $402.1 million, and finally South Africa with $118.1 million. This comes as China topped the list of highest exporting BRICS countries to Egypt during the year 2022, where the value of Egypt's imports amounted to $14.4 billion, while Russia came second with $4.1 billion, then India with $4.1 billion, then Brazil with $3.6 billion, and finally South Africa with $133 million. The investments of the BRICS countries in Egypt amounted to $891.2 million during the fiscal year 2021-2022, compared to $610.9 million during the fiscal year 2022-2021. China ranked first in the list of the highest investment countries of the BRICS group in Egypt during the fiscal year 2021-2022, as the value of its investments amounted to $369.4 billion. India came second, then South Africa, then Russia, and finally Brazil. In the same context, the agency revealed the value of remittances of Egyptians working in the BRICS countries reached 
$84.7 million during the fiscal year 2021-2022 compared to $41.8 million during the fiscal year 2020-2021, an increase of 102.5%, while remittances of workers from the BRICS countries reached in Egypt it amounted to $49.7 million compared to $54.5 million, a decrease of 8.7%. Brazil came at the top of the list of the highest BRICS countries in remittances from Egyptians working in it during the fiscal year 2021-2022 with a value of $42.4 million. Russia came second, then China, then South Africa, and finally India. Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the Daily Debate and uh, I'm honored uh, to be having with me over the program for tonight in the studio, Dr. Alia Mustafa, the sustainable development expert. Thank you very much once again for being with us uh, tonight. Um, Engineer Hassan Shaban was over the phone. He said that this is um, even more pressure over yes. Egypt to be joining the BRICS for the future mm -hmm. would be an invitation to succeed in the future. How do you think we should be dealing with uh, this pressure? Yes, uh, as uh, he has mentioned, uh, um, a very, very big, uh, important uh, points uh, regarding joining uh, Egypt the Brex. Yes. Uh, one of the uh, of the points that he has mentioned that the problem with Ethiopia and this would be a very uh, good. Uh, uh, a leap or a step to uh, solve the conflict that is happening yes. among the two uh, countries and also he mentioned the road that is going to the heart of Africa that would be a very very important and essential uh, uh, for Egypt and for whole, the whole world uh, politically and economically as well uh, but I want to talk about what should Egypt to do and the next uh, steps yes uh, I want to say that, uh, in my opinion, uh, that uh, joining the BRICS, um, as we have mentioned, that is having a very big privilege for Egypt about uh, the technology transfer, the the, um, the economical uh, sectors and the political sectors as well. But we have to uh, do some stuff that, or some important steps that mm. in the following uh, years. Uh, I see that we uh, um, should not surrender completely to the entity. We have to uh, put our own plan to solve our own problems. Yes. And uh, we cannot play it, uh, uh, this game as traders only by exports and imports in decreasing and increasing this. But also we have to start uh, uh, the uh, uh, importing the uh, or having some uh, profits of China as well and some other uh, uh, members of the uh, entity to help us in the agriculture uh, part by uh, having the uh, technological agriculture yes. which I see it's a very very big and important issue that we have to consider and to put in mind uh, agriculture is affects uh, completely or um, um, dominating the whole market the whole local market in Egypt and will affect on the prices and affect on the balance of the currencies and uh, empower Egypt economically and industrial as well as uh, uh, the engineer uh, has mentioned that we have to uh, support the agriculture sector yes. by several equipments and also not only agriculture all the areas that in Egypt we are uh, uh, supporting in the agriculture sector we have also at the same time put or structure uh, 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 manufacturing areas at the same time that will reflect this uh, uh, a lot on our market and affects also on the prices that all the Egyptian citizens we were uh, uh, suffering from we uh, have been suffering from the uh, acceleration of the inflation that yes. happens with the dollar affects yeah, us especially after so the Russian Ukrainian conflict as well exactly that one of the biggest uh, um, challenges that uh, Egypt has been facing and also that affects on the dollar price and the inflation and also 
uh, that pours on the uh, on the local markets and also the Egyptian citizens. So we have to uh, take a very quick steps in this part. We have not, uh, or we shouldn't neglect our local market and specifically the agriculture, industrial, and I see also the technological sector as well. Doctor, you mentioned that we need to be focusing on our problems and maybe getting solutions from the other members of uh, the BRICS. One of the uh, problems that we have here in Egypt, as you mentioned, is that we are relying on the dollar to be exporting and importing goods and even uh, agricultural products as well within uh, the country's needs. So after joining the BRICS, what are your expectations regarding not relying so much on the dollar? Because we know that there is a rule between the members of the BRICS that we could be having trade exchange, for example, between Egypt and China with the Egyptian pound and the Chinese uh, yuan, or maybe a unified uh, no. currency between local currency. Yes, be between the other uh, members. No. How do you think this should be affecting uh, the? economy of Egypt and the other economies as well and of course the uh, social and uh, the uh, developmental aspects of the citizens all over the block. Okay. Uh, I see uh, that I have uh, mentioned before, this will uh, release the domination of the dollar yes. on the uh, local market in Egypt. And uh, especially we are talking about uh, the, the point with the local councils, all the members of BRICS are discussing now a decision to uh, have their uh, own currency. It could be the uh, Chinese yuan or yes. they are going to create a, a special currency only for the BRICS members. Mm -hmm. uh, this will affect on the dollar, how it's going to affect on the dollar, uh, as people may think that will decrease the price of the dollar, I don't think it's going to happen. Yes. It uh, tends to be more stable. Uh, it decreases the effect uh, or the, uh, the effect of the dollar on the global market and also on the uh, Egyptian market especially is not going to affect on the uh, dollar to decrease the price of the dollar and so on. I don't mm. think it's not going to happen. Mm. Yes, doctor, as uh, an expert in uh, the uh, development and of course the sustainable development in yes. specific, what are the goals for Egypt nowadays to be reaching? Because we have a number of agendas and a number of plans to be reaching the sustainable development goals in in the near future for uh, within Africa and uh, for Egypt in 2030 and for Africa in 2063. How do you think we could be uh, having more benefits in this field in sustainable development goals and reaching it and of course fighting the negative impacts of climate change from the other members of the bloc uh, of the BRICS because it uh, incorporates a country like China which is one of the major c uh, contributors to the uh, negative impacts of uh, climate change and pollution all over the world. Yes, uh, I see that um, this is a really, really uh, important uh, uh, topic that we have to, to mention. Number one, I see that we have to focus on the investments. Mm. So we have to uh, um, encourage the uh, foreign investments to yes. be in Egypt and this will help uh, a lot and the Egyptian economy <clears throat> growth and the, the acceleration of the growth as well. Uh, not only the in, uh, investments, we have also to uh, focus on several other aspects as we, uh, we have mentioned, the educational sector, agricultural sector, and also the technology and transformation of the technology. Uh, I see one of the most important issues that we have to focus on is the transformation, the creating of technology. We have to invest on the people. That's uh, what I see. It's uh, the best investment in all times in the whole world is to start investing on the person of the Egyptian citizen and this will reflect on everything around us. Yes, and finally, in a minute, how do you think we could be focusing on the Egyptian citizen and the Egyptian identity? Because it is one of the goals for the uh, agenda of the sustainable development goals for the country here. Yes, uh, the Egyptian identity, I think this uh, one of the most uh, important issues and uh, the Egyptian identity is very, very uh, dominating yes. and uh, uh, it uh, forcing itself 
whatever mm -hmm. we are having uh, different countries different cultures and uh, the Egyptian citizen will and is going uh, to have its own step and its own uh, rule and the local and the global uh, economical uh, development in the next few years. Yes, uh, Dr. Yes. Alia Mustafa, the sustainable development expert, thank you very much for being with us tonight on the Daily Debate. Thank you. Anytime. And this uh, brings us to the end of uh, the Daily Debate uh, for tonight. Thank you for watching and goodbye.